In this video, I'm going to be going over seven tips for improving your use of Epic's new results review and make sure you stick around for my number one tip that's really going to improve your efficiency. So as you all know, a few months ago, Epic recently released their new results review and this came with a lot of growing pains, obviously, as people were struggling to figure out how to use this new system. And so I thought it would be great to take a little bit of time to show you how I like to optimize my process of using the new results review and just showing you some of the new features and functions. So here we have a test patient pulled up and we're looking at at the new Epic results review, and this is gonna be the default view that you're gonna see. And the first tip that I wanna tell you is to know how the all rows function and the most recent column function work. And because this is one of the, probably the biggest changes that came to the new results review and I think confused a lot of people. So when you check the all rows function, this is going to show every single row of data that the patient has ever had, uh, basically their entire life. So for example, right now, look how large this uh, scroll bar is. When I click the all rows function, you're going to see how this scroll bar on the right is actually going to get a lot smaller because all of a sudden a bunch of new data points are going to be pulling up and this is a big problem that a lot of people are having with the new epic results review is that there's going to be a ton of these blank columns that really makes it hard to read uh, the actual results so for example um, by clicking that we now have pulled up this fev1 fev1 predicted uh, all these urinalysis things and you know the spirometry down here um, as well as a whole host of other things for example this PSA screen and vitamin D. Now, if I uncheck that, then it's only going to display more recent results. And so you see immediately that there's less blank space. There's obviously still some because uh, the system's a little bit buggy in my opinion. Uh, but you see that we're not getting a bunch of those random uh, differential labs that didn't have any data populated. We're not getting all those uh, spirometry readings and we're not getting the PSA and vitamin D hydroxy. So this is one thing that I would definitely suggest that you uncheck if you're having too many results uh, basically populated and just creating a bunch of blank space everywhere. Um, this is basically the reason that you might be experiencing that. And I've seen this with many patients who have had like a whole panel of like allergy tests back in 2010 or something. And if you have all rows checked, then every single allergy test that the patient has ever had is just going to be in your way when you're trying to interpret their lab values. So the second part of this tip is to understand what the most recent column is going to do for you. So when you click this most recent column, it's actually going to, by default, check all rows. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you this new column that gives you the most recent um, result for every single uh, data point that the patient has ever had before. So if you look here, now it's showing us the patient's blood type. Um, it's showing the PSA and the vitamin D. And these are all the most recent values, even though, you know, this was done in 2020. And these INR studies were done in 2018. And also, you're going to see all of the differential stuff that we pulled up earlier and the spirometry values as well. So this can be one good way to quickly chart review a patient. And basically, with one quick glance, see every single lab value that they've ever gotten before and see the most re recent result for that. That, uh, particular value. Uh, personally, I do find this can be a little bit confusing sometimes because sometimes it's going to pull in really, really old results, which is kind of unnecessary. For example, uh, this myoglobin that was drawn in 2014. Um, and so personally, I like to kind of keep my results review as similar to the old results review as much as possible. And I found that the best way to do that is really to de uh, deactivate the most recent results and also deactivate all rows. And this gives you the most classic kind of results review experience. Obviously, you may have different preferences. And I'm actually very curious to hear down below what you guys think about the most recent results column. And if you personally like to have that feature activated in order to quickly review your patients. So let's move on to tip number two, and that's going to be decreasing the default font size. So right now I'm on the default settings and to change your settings, you just go to this wrench up here in the top left corner. And what I like to do is immediately, I like to change the font size to small. And what you're going to see is that this is immediately going to give you a lot more data points, both vertically and horizontally you're going to be able to see more, which helps speed up your process of reviewing the patient. For example, right now I can see down to thyroid stimulating hormone and I can see up to December 2021. So if I immediately change this font size to small, uh, you will see right away that now I can see all the way down to platelets and also we're going back to 2018. So 
a hundred percent recommend you change your default font size to small. Moving on to tip number two. Um, well, first of all, I'm just going to leave this new results highlighting on. Uh, I prefer to have that and row labels and filters on the left. And I personally like to have newest data on the left. And you'll see that a lot of people will actually tend to do this as well. Um, you know, some people say, hey, normally we read left to right. So shouldn't you keep all the newest data on the right? Um, but personally, I find it more helpful to have the newest data on the left because that puts it close closer to the row labels here, which makes it a little bit easier to figure out what this is. So for example, this two right here, um, it's a little bit harder for me to quickly see what that two corresponds to. But if it was over here to the left, it'd be a little bit easier to see, uh, you know, the corresponding row, row label. And also I feel like most of the important data we want to see first, right? So yes, typically we read left to right, but uh, in terms of the hospital, we like to see that new data first because that's going to be the most um, pressing data that we want to see right away. And we want our eyes to be drawn there right away instead of having to look towards the right. So you'll see that a lot of people will actually tend to put this newest data on the left. So you'll see that instead of the 2022 data being over here, it's actually going to switch over and move over to the left side. And this is personally how I like to have my setup. Tip number four is going to be setting your default time filter to since time mark. I'm gonna have to make a full video on this uh, because actually I think this is probably the most important step that you may learn in this video because this is the most um, useful setting in the results review that's really gonna help make sure you don't ever miss a new result ever again. So if you see all of these uh, results, they're all highlighted in blue. And that means it's a new result that you have not time marked yet or if you're not, you've not told the system that you've re reviewed this uh, or seen this lab, lab value yet. When you hit time mark, this is basically going to tell the system that you have seen everything. And so immediately, all of these results are, go are going to no longer be highlighted. And that way, when you go back to your patient list, um, you know, you'll see that this new result flag disappears and a new result flag is going to pop up whenever the new next result comes in. And then that's a great way for you to just get the result as soon as possible and make sure you don't miss anything. So when you have your time filter set to this since time mark, it's only going to uh, display to you the new results that have just come in. And unfortunately, this patient didn't have any new results, so I can't totally show that to you. Uh, but this really helps out, for example, if the patient had a test that was done you know, seven days ago and it just finally came back, you're actually going to see it very, very easily right here and you're never going to miss a test result ever again. Whereas if you are expanded to all results, um, you're going to see that there's a new result, but then potentially you're not going to be able to find where that new result is. And so that's why having it you know, set to the since time mark, make sure you never miss a, a new lab result ever again. And then after this, uh, obviously, if you want to see all the data again, you just click this uh, calendar here or you hit expand all results and then it's going to bring you up all the new results as well. So this is probably the most important tip that I can give you. I'll explain this a little bit more in depth in another video, but uh, marking things uh, as time marked is going to be one of the most useful things you can do in terms of your use of results review. Tip number five is just going to be simple navigating throughout the results review because previously you would just click on this blank space, like a blank space over here and that would further expand additional columns. And honestly, I really like that system. Uh, but now they have this weird system where you have to use these uh, arrows to move through and uh, take a look at the labs. So you can go one by one, but I find it a little bit cumbersome. And basically my tip here is to really just get used to using this uh, move back one page function. And so you'll see that if you use it, it's going to leave one result from your prior page. So in this case, we can see the INR 2.3 and INR 1.14 here. And so if I hit move back one page, it's going to show me one entirely new page. Um, but it's going to leave one previous value from the previous page as well. And I really like using this because it's just a lot faster to move through it like this uh, rather than moving one at a time because when you move one at a time, it can sometimes be pretty laggy. So this is just a small tip, a minor tip um, that I think is my personal preference. Tip number six is to know how to quickly trend things. And uh, one thing I do like about the new results review is it's a lot easier to trend things. So for example, if I wanted to trend somebody's creatinine, all I have to do is hover over creatinine and then this trend this row vertically will uh, pop up and you just have to click that and you'll get a complete trend of their creatinine. Or for example, with their hemoglobin, you can do it here as well. This makes it a little bit easier than it used to be because you previously had to select the row and then go up here to view as flow sheet. And it was like a multi, multi-click process. Um, it's just become a lot more streamlined now. And you can also view this data as a graph as well. So just right next to that flow sheet, you just hit, hit view as graph. And this can give you a um, kind of visual depiction of how their hemoglobin has been trending as well. 
Tip number seven is going to be some tips on how to actually look up groups of tests in order to trend them. So for example, let's say I want to look at somebody's lipid panel or iron panel. These are very common situations where I want to actually look at multiple studies over time. And so for example, now if I type LDL cholesterol, uh, I'm only going to pull up uh, just the LDL, uh, right? Um, but instead I could do cholesterol and you could just actually click plus on all of these and now you're going to get like multiple things pulled in uh, to, to this panel here. Alternatively, you can also uh, hit the check mark here to add that to your panel as well. This actually happens very frequently. And so I actually highly recommend that you get used to searching for things and then um, actually being able to select all of them like that. This is a particular problem with um, at my institution with VBGs because there's like three different types of VBGs that could have been ordered. You know, there's no VBG on this patient, but say we were looking at carbon dioxide and say there was like three of them and you just click one of them, it's not going to have all the complete data. And so it's really nice if you can add in all the other ones so you can make sure you can see every single VBG that the patient had. In order to go back to the full view, all you have to do is hit this X right here, and that's going to show you all of the results. And finally, one bonus tip that I'd like to add in is uh, a quick way that I like to actually review patients because all of this data can be sometimes very overwhelming and all of these values can be very spread apart. For example, if there's a bunch of different other tests, you know, each CBC might be really spaced apart, so it's hard for you to actually trend things really quickly. So one thing I often like to do when I'm reviewing a new patient is just click each of these sections individually. So I'll hit chemistry and then this gives me a little bit more of a compact view of their, you know, basic metabolic panel um, rather than having them all spread out super far. Then I'll take a look at coagulation, hematology, and I'll just literally go through these one by one. So you're not as overwhelmed with so much data compared to if you just had all the results going at, at the same time. So again, going over the main tips, make sure you know how all results and uh, the most recent column works. Know how to customize your font size, uh, move things to the left or the right, depending on what you like, and how to use time mark. And then definitely know how to uh, search labs up very quickly and efficiently, and also add multiple data sets to your search, um, you know, so you can trend multiple things at the same time. Personally, I do still have some gripes with the new results review because uh, the new one is a lot slower than the previous one was. I felt like the old one was a lot snappier and less laggy. And so I hope this is something that Epic can work on and improve in the future. Um, the reason I feel like this happens is because the new results review will literally pull up all of the data that the patient has ever had. Whereas previously, uh, the old Epic results review would only, only pull in 10 columns of data or something like that, whatever you set it to. And so it wasn't so laggy when you were trying to review patient. That being said, I do feel like there's a lot of potential for the most recent results column to be very, very useful in reviewing a patient very quickly. And I'm actually very curious, again, on your guys' thoughts on using the most recent results column. Please let me know down in the comments below if you're personally using that and finding it useful. And I hope this video was useful. Hopefully it can spur up a little bit of conversation on how we can uh, use the results review a little bit more optimally and efficiently. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.